Thank you for being here to see my talk. My name is Jared Hertzberg. I'm with IBM Research in Yorktown Heights, New York. And I want to say a big thanks to the many people who are involved in this work and related work, and to IBM for funding, of course, and for external funding that we received for part of this work. I want to talk about uh, one particular aspect of um, scaling up lattices of qubits for uh, larger scale um, multi-qubit quantum processors, um, and focusing particularly on the kind of architecture that we uh, have used very often uh, in our work at IBM, uh, where we have um, fixed frequency transmon qubits that we connect to one another by uh, microwave buses and that we've used for scaling up all the way to the 50 qubit level at this point, um, and where we're particularly employing uh, all microwave cross resonance gate to produce a ZX interaction and implement a controlled NOT gate. Um, and the key to this cross resonance gate has been very often discussed. Um, is that you have a control qubit, target qubit, and you're driving the control qubit at the target qubit's frequency in order to activate the gate through the, the intervening microwave bus. Um, now, the fact that you're driving the control qubit at the target qubit's frequency gives you the, um, the issue that you can run into degeneracies between the energy levels of these two qubits. All right, so, uh, you can have a um, degeneracy between the O1 states of two qubits where, which are nearest neighbors. You could have a degeneracy between O1 and the O2 over 2, between O1 and the 1, 2 of nearest neighbors. You can have cases where the, um, the frequencies of the control and target are too far apart, so the ZX uh, interaction is too weak to run an effective gate. And you also have to consider interactions between next nearest neighbors in the lattice. So you could have a degeneracy between the O1s uh, or a degeneracy between the, uh, the O1 and the 1, 2 of next nearest neighbors. And we also have to consider um, uh, interactions between three qubits where you could have a two photon excitation that would lead to a degeneracy between uh, two qubits and another one's uh, O2 state. Um, so we, we call these uh, so-called frequency collisions or frequency crowding, uh, and I've listed here effectively seven types of these, uh, these cases that we have to avoid when we set the frequencies for our qubits in a multi-qubit lattice. And we have to, to define some kind of exclusion range around each one of these uh, collision types. And we've been able to extract that approximately from some work that we've done theoretically, that, that some of my colleagues at IBM have done theoretically, trying to, to set a bound where the, um, these frequency collisions would be the limiting case for the, uh, for the gate fidelity compared to the typical gate fidelities that we're able to achieve, we can set some very approximate bounds on many of these collisions. So let's think about how that's gonna affect um, the overall functioning of a lattice, right? So the, the, in order to avoid these collisions, we wanna try to set a a pattern of frequencies in the lattice that is uh, where, where um, you totally avoid all those types of collisions, right? So let's say you have the square lattice, familiar from surface code. Um, if you have five distinct frequencies, what you've done is you've set so that no two on the same bus have the same frequency, and also nearest neighbors and next nearest neighbors uh, are not degenerate in their frequencies. And, um, but we know that in setting frequencies of fixed frequency qubits, there's some imprecision in setting those frequencies. So we wanna try to develop some model for how this will scale. And we can do that by um, 
treating each of these frequencies as a, a median frequency uh, with some distribution, pardon me, and uh, randomly assign the frequencies drawn from that distribution, count the coll collisions, and repeat this as sort of Monte Carlo style to see what, how many collisions you're likely to have among the frequencies, and then to see how likely you are to have a collision free chip. Um, so, schematically, you can think of that as distributions of frequencies that for around each of these five frequencies. And when we run a model on, say, this type of chip, what we can find is that the likelihood of having a collision free chip can be very um, precisely stated in terms of what this precision is that you're able to set the, the frequencies with. So if you look at this plot here, you could say, well, if you can set the frequencies with a 50 megahertz precision in this five frequency pattern, then your 17 qubit square lattice is liable to have, oh, say about a 50% chance of having fewer than eight collisions, a 10% chance of having fewer than four, and a 0.2% chance of having fewer than, of having zero collisions. So we want to try to apply this kind of statistical model to uh, different lattice types and frequency patterns that we believe to be uh, able to be evading the, the frequency crowding problem. So there's the five frequency pattern at a, uh, a 17 qubit square lattice, a 49 qubit square lattice. These correspond to uh, lattice types that could run uh, say a surface code type error correction at uh, a distance three or a distance five. Um, we've also begun looking at lattices of a different connectivity, a different layout. You can see some work in this recent paper. Um, here is a, uh, what we call a heavy hexagon lattice uh, and a three frequency pattern, which we, we are gonna look at in this model for how it, it's able to evade the frequency crowding. Um, and here is a, what we call a heavy square lattice, again with a, uh, a four frequency pattern that should be able to uh, be resistant to the frequency crowding issue. So when we take all of these different kinds of lattices, we run them in that Monte Carlo model, and we're gonna look for how many um, collisions does each type of lattice uh, develop on average for putting these uh, three frequency pattern, four frequency pattern, or five frequency pattern for these different types of for these different types of lattices. And what you do see is that the square lattice for the same size of lattice, effective same distance of lattice, um, you always seem to be having more collisions at, at any scale. And then followed by the heavy square and then the heavy hexagon. Um, so uh, let's look at the, what we call the yield, that is a fraction of cases in the statistical model that will have be collision free. And that looks like, um, me, like this. Okay. Um, and um, so what we see is that if we're looking for say a distance five lattice where we can uh, we can operate uh, without collisions, putting these, uh, these five frequency or three frequency or four frequency pattern in to evade the collisions. Um, we have to be able to achieve uh, uh, precisions of setting the qubit frequency in these patterns that, that you can read off of this plot here. So let's say we were, we were gonna aim to have 10% of our chips be collision free. Um, and in that case, you would need to have, uh, you'd really wanna be working with one of the heavy hexagon or heavy square lattices and be able to achieve a frequency precision of 10 to 20 megahertz. So let's say, let's get a sense of how, uh, what we can do practically to achieve these precisions and how are we doing. Um, Here's a, a test bed chip where we have 36 qubits that we can look at 
uh, frequency statistics on a, on a fairly large scale. Um, and here we know that the frequencies are going to be correlated to the junction resistances of the, of the, the fixed frequency transmons, uh, the tunnel junction resistances. And so here's, a, here's uh, the set of tunnel junction resistances that we measured on this chip. And we cool that chip in the fridge and we have a distribution of frequencies. Now we're going to try to do is use some techniques that have been discussed a uh, fair amount in the literature of trying to say selectively anneal the, the tunnel junctions with a focused laser beam in order to, to set the frequencies precisely. What we're going to try to do for a, uh, for a test here is to make a two frequency pattern um, for an initial evaluation of this kind of technique. And so we do that, and we set resistances uh, on this chip, and we've made it. We've certainly made two distributions of resistances, and we can see that there the spread in each resistance is about uh, about 50 ohms. Now, if we take this chip and we cool it down in the fridge, and we measure the qubit frequencies, we see, see that we do indeed have two target qubit frequencies. And the spread off of those two targets is about 12 ohms, a sigma of about, uh, or rather 12 megahertz, a sigma of about 12 megahertz uh, off of these two target frequencies. So we see this as uh, pretty good progress towards meeting the uh, goals that were laid out uh, in terms of the statistical model for how do you evade uh, the frequency collision problem. Um, so let me summarize. Um, we recognize and we're, we're working hard to quantify the frequency crowding problem in collisions of, in, uh, in lattices of uh, fixed frequency tr uh, qubits um, where uh, we're, we're trying to avoid frequency crowding in order to, to maintain gate fidelity. Um, we can use a statistical model to show that the precision of setting the qubit frequencies is really the key parameter in order to be able to predict how well you're evading the frequency crowding. We're able to demonstrate statistically that these alternate heavy hexagon uh, type lattices with a three frequency pattern are much superior to a square lattice in evading the frequency crowding problem. Um, but we need a, a good precision of setting the qubit frequencies in order to make use of that. And we started to try uh, a technique of selective anneal of the junctions in the transmons in order to achieve uh, uh, desired qubit frequencies. And I'll say thank you very much. <laughs>